Hi everyone, this is a short tutorial to show you how to use the Loop Archive module that I, um, that I package with most of my injector based plugins. Um, what it is, loosely, is a, a, a custom Divi module that uses another Divi module in its loop. So when you've got a page like an archive page, um, you, you'd obviously, uh, for instance, a custom post type archive, a product archive, uh, any sort of page. Uh, it's going to have a number of products or items per page, so 10 blog posts per page, for instance. Um, so the way we think about it is we create one layout for the archive page, that is the um, where you're going to see the list of the 10, and another archive, um, which will be repeated 10 times, or whatever number you set the per, uh, per page limit to, um, will be repeated as many times as there are products or um, items. So this is a, um, a a completely empty WordPress install here, uh, and I've used the, the standard project post type, and I've just added um, eleven just so we get some pagination um, projects with out using the builder, just with some basic lipsum and a picture for the featured image. Um, now this is going to take the normal um, the normal archive page from this, which is going to sh show you. That's what you get out of the box with Divi for posts, for search results, for categories, um, for, for anything really. And I've built a basic layout in about two minutes, which looks like this. So a bit prettier. We've obviously got a bit of pagination here at the bottom, which we, we can pretty up as well. Um, and these all, you can animate these or work with them in any way that you like. So the way that we do this, um, I, for this example, I'm going to use CPT layout injection, injector or custom post type layout injector um, and I'm just working with the built-in post type pro project but it can work with posts, pages um, or any other custom post type that you'd like to add um, with the exception of products which is handled by the Woo layout injector. So first things first uh, we go and create a the, the sub layout so if you imagine um, that this first project 11 here the image, the title and the read more uh, and the text were one layout in their own right. So you can see this one is a one third, two thirds layout, but you could have 50 50, you could have a uh, full width, you could have one quarter, anything you wanted at all. And I'll show you this now. Um, so if we go and have a look at my Divi library, I've created two layouts, one of which I've called loop item, one which I've called archive. Doesn't matter what you call them. The important thing is that they are layouts and they are not global. So we'll click on our project loop item, and as you'll see, it's one third to two third layout with the featured image, ETCPT featured image custom module. And within this, I've just chosen image size of large, but you can choose anything you want. Um, and everything else is exactly as it comes out of the box, with the exception of animation, which I've turned off but it works in the normal way that Divi Animation does. You can choose your advanced design settings, custom CSS, there's quite a lot you can do with this plugin, with this module rather. I've added a simple title, ET CPT title, and there's the option here to show the meta, so the author, the date, you can change the format, any categories that go with it. That's more for when you're using it for blog posts, but um, I'll put them in there anyway. Um, and obviously if you wanted to show the the date author etc on their own without the title there's the option to hide the title as well um, but I'd expect most people just leave show meta off and hide the title off also you can style this in the normal ways as you'd expect there's quite a lot of, kind of configuration options there as well and finally I've added the ET CPT content module this is as you'd expect um, to show the content but also um, it allows you to show the excerpt or the short description depending on which post type you're going to be using. So if you use this module without setting excerpt only to yes, then what you would see is the full content. So I choose excerpt only yes, and the read more button is just a read more button, and you can change the label if you want to here. There's also advanced design settings so you can have a little play to make it do what you want. So that's what I've made for project loop item. And then I go into my Divi library. So save that, go to my Divi, li Divi library again, and I'll click on the project archive layout, which again I've created a few minutes ago. I've created a standard, easy uh, um, 
section at the top that does a text module and I've just put feature projects in. So yours might be anything, latest blog posts or, or whatever. Text color I've changed to light and I've centered it. And I've just set a background color on the section to purple. Uh, that handles the header, which you'll see here. And the section below is um, the loop archive, ETCPT loop archive. If you're looking at search injector, it will be called ET search loop archive or ET taxonomy loop archive, that product loop archive. Ultimately, the words you're looking for here are loop archive. The first option that you click uh, that you see when you open up the settings or when you add the module is loop layout. Now, all you have to have done before you add this is to add the layout first. Be very careful to make sure you add the um, the correct layout or you'll get some rather unpredictable results. Um, I've seen the archive used on its own layout before, which is always a laugh. Um, but project loop item is the one I've added. The layout is a list, so you can have it as a grid if you want, but list is why I tend to use if I'm making full width layouts. Um, if you want to make it a grid layout, then I would make the loop item layout a single column. It looks better that way. But you've got grid columns, paginations, the page numbers at the bottom. Custom query I'll come back to in a second. So when you've um, added this module, this could be in a half width column, it could be any way you wanted. So you really can include these loop archives anywhere you like. Um, you would go to your CPT layout injector or search layout injector or any other page, um, any other settings page, and assign it to the appropriate layout. You'll notice that posts and pages are there, and I'll come back to that in another video. But projects for now, we're going to look at the archive template. And now, for instance, if I go to the project and refresh, I see the same thing. If I assign the archive template to project archive and save, then I will get the improved layout here. Very, very simple to do. So that's the um, loop archive module in its basic functionality. Now, if you wanted to use this for blog posts, as up here, you'll see there's no archive template dropdown. This is because um, the posts layout doesn't have an archive set within Divi, and nor does pages because they're not, uh, they don't have the correct settings to do that. So the easy way of creating a blog page, now I don't actually have any blog posts handy uh, in my example here, I've only got projects, so I'll create um, a project archive just on a page. So imagine we were gonna create a page called blog. So we'll create a blog page here, Log. We'll use the builder, why not? Create ourselves a heading. Okay, and we'll have, there we go. And we'll just put my blog. Make it a heading one. We'll call it light. We'll center it. And we'll save and we'll change the background color of the section to something appropriate. There you go, blue. And now below, in any layout we like, but I'll just use the, um, the single column for now, I'm going to add the CPT layout again, uh, the loop archive. But because this page has no loop, as in it's not a page that would normally be used to show an archive, we have to turn on the custom query box. So first things first, we'll work our way down. So loop archive, we'll choose loop item, we want a list, we don't care about grid columns, it's not a grid, pagination we will show, why not? And in the custom query, when we say yes, it's going to ask us what post type we want. Now, as this is a blog, we would choose posts normally, however, I don't have any blog posts on this example, so I'm going to choose projects, and how many do we want? So I'll choose three, for instance. Offset is, if you'd like, the first three to be shown in a different layout to the next seven, for instance, uh, you would choose post number three offset zero with one layout, and then post number seven offset three to ignore the first three of the page. You can tell it to include taxonomy only, taxonomy terms. Um, those are slightly more complex than, um, than this tutorial allows for, um, but in short, that allows you to limit this query 
by a certain taxonomy, so a certain category, for instance. Um, so, for instance, you would put category in there, and then the name of the category um, slug that you'd like it to show in there otherwise. But for, for now, just ignore that. And we can save. Now, we have our loop archive saved, which should now, I hope, show. There we go. I'll publish my page, and hopefully I'll see three projects. And there you go. Three projects with pagination. Great way of showcasing things around the site. So if you imagine if you had a home page where you wanted to show your latest projects, for instance, we could do that. Let's have a play with the grid now, shall we? To see if we can make this a grid layout. So on my Divi library, we'll go and make a new layout here. And we'll call it um, project loop item grid. It needs to be a layout and not global. Please note you can't use global modules in with injector-based products. I'd encourage you to um, make a layout for it in its own right. It's much easier this way. Um, support for global is coming later. Now this is going to be a grid, so we're going to have to assume that this is going to be a single column. So let's add an image first of all. Uh, featured image, CPT featured image and we'll choose large again, it can be any really. You can open a light box, you can link it to different places. If you don't link it and it's on a an, uh, in a loop, it will link to the post type item, so it saves you a lot of hassle there. And it works in the same way as any other image module really. And we'll just add the title, just so we want a nice compact grid here. CPT title, there you go. And we'll turn meta off this time, and we'll save. So we've got a nice basic layout, image and title. Now let's go back to our blog and we'll put it into grid mode. So we've got three items, let's make it a grid of three to see how it's going to look. So we'll change our uh, loop layout to be project loop item grid, the one we've just created. We'll change our layout to grid and the grid columns to three. And let's turn pagination off because we want it to be a feature and we'll save. OK, update, and now let's see what happens. There you go. So I didn't, didn't turn off the animation, so they did animate in then, but um, that will work really well. So this could be featured projects or featured posts. You could have three across the top and maybe a few more further down. So let me show you a combined example. So with our loop archive here, Let's change the background colour so it's a little bit more desirable. We'll just have a grey for now. There we go. And we'll have it half transparent. There you go. And a list below. So we've got our three. Next three, we'll have, let's have six more, shall we? In list form. So we'll add another loop archive. Oops, there you go, loop archive. Loop item, the original one, if you want a list, list will show no pagination. We do want a custom query. Our post type will be project in this case. Let's show six items, but we want to offset by three. This is because we have three already showing on the page. So let's, we don't want to show those again. So let's have offset by three, which will show us posts um, four through um, nine, ten, I think. And then we'll just save. So we have two loop archives. You can change the admin label of them to make them a little bit clearer. But this will do for now. And view the permanent. There you go. So it wants a bit of styling up, a bit of padding adding around, which you can do in the advanced design settings. Um, but if you scroll down now, you should see, typical someone calls me, um, you'll see further down the page here, our six items showing correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Any project eight, nine, ten, eleven. There you go. So we have a nice feature blog page showing our three features at the top with a little bit of padding needed for styling purposes and then further more. I it's similar to what we did on elegantmarketplace.com slash blog, I believe. Exactly the same thing. This plugin was used there. Let's have a quick look. So we have our 
header at the top of the page. We have our three columns and we've offset by three and we have even more showing down the page with a, a different image size shown on the excerpt. And then we put a sidebar in there for effect. And it's a really nice result. So that's been this video. I hope that explains how to use the Loop Archive module. Any questions or further videos you'd like to see, please do get in touch. Thanks very much.